most important things to understand when using the receiver and detecting underground wires is that we need to have a methodology around how to walk in the area where we expect to have a wire, right? So one of the most common methods to detect underground wires with a receiver is to have an arc locking. So we do know that there's a wire somewhere here. We don't know exactly where. So what we're going to do is that we're going to put our receiver in 60 hertz as it was before. We're going to turn on the noise speaker. And you guys will notice that based on the way I'm walking through this environment in an arc, you will hear the sensitivity getting closer or lower to the air, getting higher or lower depending on the area where I'm walking, right? That will help you to sample what is the path of the wire, right? The first thing is that we need to be sure where is the wire, right? So I just enabled the speaker, which is off for not generating noise. And you will hear that now walking in an arc mode, the more we get closer to the asphalt band, the more noise we get. The farther we get from it, the less noise we got. So now we were able to we were able to sample the area, and by walking as an arc, semicircle, we were able to determine what is the average area where the wire is it's, it's located. Right? And that doesn't mean that we know the direction of the wire. Now that we detect one of the points where the wire is located, energized, we, we need to find the direction. We need to determine the direction of the wire. One of the ways to do it is by playing with our wrists. So if you guys can see a full sensitivity, when I move my wrist, there's not really change of magnitude, right, or sensitivity. But if I adjust the sensitivity with the joystick and I move my wrist, you will notice that the sensitivity changes. So, in this direction, you will get higher sensitivity than this direction. Use always as a point and axis the UX or the screen or LCD of the device, right? So again, playing with the wrist, on this direction we have full sensitivity or full signal, while we would move it to the right, we won't have any signal, right? Now this is interesting, right? If we go back to that direction and I move my wrist 180 degrees, we get full signal again. So this is a very easy method to detect direction and now we know that the wire is going this way. So if we go more in detail in relation to the direction method, look at how the signal uh, changes when I play with my wrist. See? So we kind of like know that the wire it's going through this direction, right? Another way to, to confirm this is we move to the opposite 180 degrees side and we should have the same signal magnitude, right? Or say, same, same signal sensitivity. That means that the wire is moving this direction. It should be a long axis that will cross the entire UX and that will align or overlap with the handling area of our, of our receiver. First thing is to know one point of the wire and the second thing is to understand what is the direction of the wire so know your key know your environment detect the clues find one point after detecting the clues and the third one try to estimate the direction of the wire by playing with your wrist and adjusting the sensitivity of the signal when you are in radio mode just be aware that there's a lot of noise outdoors from radio frequency signals, so it's not 100% accurate mode. But we want to use the radio mode to be sure where is the utility, what is the what is the estimated direction. So we do know that there's a utility here, so we pinpoint the area, and we want to know what is the direction, right? So we do have the asphalt layer as a direction, so we can use a scanning method with our arm. If you guys notice, when I'm moving like a pendulum the receiver, you will notice that every time I'm reaching the asphalt layer height, you'll get full signal. So that is a way to estimate the direction if you guys have a lot of noise.